All right, welcome to oscillators. We're going to generate stuff. So let's look at some basic oscillator theory. What we have is an amplifier with a feedback loop. The feedback loop, negative feedback, stops oscillation. So a normal amplifier, we have negative feedback, and we're going to control the amount of gain on it, and we won't have oscillation. Positive feedback produces oscillation. Oscillators use typically positive feedback. Some of the feedback loop parameters, uh, there is a phase shift around the loop. So if we go all the way around this loop here, the amplifier is part of the loop. It should come up to 360 degrees. Uh, the feedback loop over here, it will attenuate this uh, signal due to the, its components. The loop gain must be one unity. If it's a greater than one, we're going to have a runaway amp. If it's less than one, we won't have oscillation. Um, it will also, this feedback loop circuit will determine the oscillation frequency. So the phase shift must be 360 degrees throughout this loop. And we require that to oscillate. We get phase through the feedback loop and the phase through the amplifier. When we add the two phases together, they will add up to 360 degrees. We need an amplifier, and we need the amplifier to sustain oscillation. Otherwise, the sing signal will decay. So we'll get initial ringing, it'll start going, and then it'll just slowly decay. And the purpose of the amplifier is to stop the decay. So we have our output signal here. We have a nice sine wave, our output. It gets through our feedback uh, circuit, and what happens is it gets attenuated. The amplifier has to boost the gain, a uh, boost the signal back up to our original signal level. So if we look at this complete loop, it should have a gain of one. Uh, the loop determines the frequency. So the components in the loop are going to determine the frequency of oscillation. So the first oscillator we'll look at is called an RC oscillator. It's composed of a series of resistor capacitors. So here's our uh, uh, ca resistor capacitor. Looks like a high-pass filter, another high-pass filter, and another high-pass filter. Right? The amplifier compensates for the loss through the RC components. And what typically is you'll need a gain of at least 29 in this circuit for this to work properly. Our feedback loop is from V out of our... Uh, op amp here, it comes back here, we lose a bunch of gain, and then we have to boost it back up. There's phase shifts through each RC stage, and it's 60, roughly 60 degrees at each oscillation frequency. The phase shift through all three of these stages adds up to 180 degrees. We have an inverting amp, and the inverting amp puts because it inverts, it's 180 degrees out of phase, and now we're back to our 360. Frequency or resonance calculation, we call it FR. Sometimes you'll see it as FO, as frequency of oscillation. Uh, for an RC oscillator, FR is equal to 1 over 2 pi RC, square root of 2 times N. N is the number of RC stages, the component pairs. We had three RC pairs in the previous, or three RC stages. So N is equal to 3. In this, uh, uh, one of the things we'll find is R1 is equal to R2 equals R3 equals 1K. Uh, C1 is equal to C2 and C3, and it's 0 0.01 microfarad. If we pop this into our formula, we should get a frequency of resonance of 6.5 kilohertz. RC oscillator example number one, the resistors R1, R2, R3 is equal to 68k ohm. C1 is equal to C2 equals C3 is 47 picofarad. What is the frequency of resonance? You can calculate that out. The answer is on a separate file on Brightspace. RC oscillator example number two, R1 equals R2, R3, and they're equal to 1.8 K ohms. C1 equals C2 equals C3, and that's equal to 750 picofarad. What is the frequency of resonance for this circuit? The answer is again on Brightspace. 
it'll be in the uh, content section under the theory and it's called the oscillator uh, examples answers oscillator example answers second oscillator type we'll look at is called Hartley Hartley uses inductors and capacitors in a pi shape it's called a pi filter so because it's shaped like the letter pi right and uh, the way we remember this is that we've got inductors in this circuit and inductors the units of measurements are Henry's so we go the H for Henry's is Hartley Hartley calculation is uh, the frequency of resonance is equal to 1 over 2 pi square root of L times C. Now the L that we use here is L1 plus L2. So we add the two inductors together for this L calculation here. Hartley oscillator calculator. A calculation, if we do a C1 is 1 microfarad and L1 equals L2 is 1 millihenry. Uh, what we'll find out that L total that we'll use is 2 millihenries times 1 microfarad, take the square root times 2 pi, and take 1 over all of that mess, we end up with 3.56 kilohertz. This is a good practice for you. Make sure you can put it in your calculator. As I mentioned several times before, number one problem I find in electronics is people can't uh, get their calculators to do what they want. Hartley example number one, uh, what we have is our capacitor C1 is 470 picofarad. Our two inductors are 0. 0. 0.0022 millihenries or 2.2 .2 nano henry. Oh, what the heck would that be? Uh, 0. 0.22, 2200 microhenries. Uh, what is the frequency of resonance? The answer is on bright space. Hartley example two, capacitor one is 3.3 .3 nanofarad, L1 equals L2, which is 0 0.68 microhenry. What is the frequency of resonance? And the answer is on bright space for, for you to check. Third oscillator we'll look at is called the Cole Pitts oscillator. It's similar to a Hartley, and basically what he did is he just swapped the uh, inductors and capacitors. Right? Now, for Cole Pitts, easy way to remember it is Cole Pitts starts with a C, and we got lots of capacitors. Right? We got our capacitors here. Hartley had inductors. Colpitt's calculation, the initial calculation is quite scary. Uh, it uses C1 times C2 divided by C1 plus C2. That is if C1 and C2 are different values. We're going to use a simple version which where C1 equals C2, and then we just replace this mess of a formula with C over C2, C over 2. Right? So if we have an example here, we have uh, L1 is 1 millihenry, C1 is 1 microfarad, the other C2 is 1 microfarad. We end up, after we put it into this formula, we'll get the frequency of resonance is 7.1 kilohertz. Uh, th what these uh, oscillators do is they put out a sine wave. Uh, it won't be a pretty sine wave. Some put out pretty nice sine waves. It'll be a sine wave of sorts with a little bit of distortion in it. Cole Pitts example one, C1 equals C2 equals 220 picofarad. L1 equals 750 microhenry. What is the frequency of resonance? Uh, the answer is on bright space for you to check. Cole Pitts example two, C1 equals C2 equals 910 picofarad. L1 is 51 microhenry. What is FR? Answer is on bright space. Adjustable inductors. Uh, this is just uh, a lot of times what we'll do is we'll put an adjustable inductor into an oscillator circuit so that way we can fine tune the frequency. Um, 
what happens, uh, here's an example of an adjustable uh, inductor. It's a coil of wire, and then we have a screw-type ferrite coil, a core that screws into the, uh, the middle of the inductor. Now, as we screw this in, we're going to change the magnetic properties, and we're going to change the inductance. And, that, and there's a couple different types. This is a typical for a PC board soldering, and right, and and they're very uh, low in inductance, like in the in the Pico Henrys and that. Now, when you have one of these on a, a board, you'll see this on a lot of radio equipment, on uh, radio receivers, television receivers, um, transmitters, and that. You can't use a regular screwdriver to adjust it because the metal uh, of the screwdriver will change the magnetic field. And as soon as you move your screwdriver away, it'll be not tuned anymore. So you need a special wand like this. We've got, we, uh, did I call it a, yeah, it's a tuning wand? It'll have a, a couple different ends on it for different size inductors. And that way you can adjust it. And when you remove your uh, wand, it hasn't affected the magnetic field. The uh, last oscillator we'll look at is called a Wien bridge oscillator. Uh, the basic circuit is that we have a high pass filter and we have a low pass filter. And what that does is it forms a band pass filter and it's tuned for a specific frequency. Um, the center frequency is the oscillation frequency of it. The amplifier does not add a phase change. The result is positive feedback through the complete system. We in bridge calculations. Uh, calculation is quite easy. It's the frequency of resonance equal 1 over 2 pi RC. Uh, the condition is that R1 is equal to R2 and C1 is equal to C2. Let's do a calculation example in this circuit. Uh, this is actually uh, the circuit that we used to do in lab 16, but uh, we can't do it as you know the circumstances. Um, I tried to s simulate this in electronic workbench and also in Tinkercad. Neither of the programs will work on complex circuits like this. And that's so. So C1 is equal to C2. They're both 0 0.01 microfarads. R1 is equal to R2, 1K ohm resistors. We pop them in this formula. We come up with 15.9 kilohertz. Uh, we in bridge example number one. This is for you guys to do on your own. R1 equals R2 equals 27 K ohm resistor. C1 equals C2, which is equal to 680 picofarad. You put it in our formula, 1 over 2 pi RC. We end up with a frequency of resonance. The answers are on bright space. We in bridge example number two, R1 equals R2 is 33k ohm. C1 equals C2, it's 220 picofarad. What is the frequency of resonance? The answers are on bright space. So when you look at this circuit, what we see is there's something unusual. This is our feedback resistor here, just for a regular op amp. This is a non-inverting op amp, so this is RF and RN. Now RF is split up into two resistors, a 33K and a 3.9K resistor. Across the 33K is that we have two back-to-back -back di diodes. Now what these back-to-back -back diodes do is they provide gain control on the feedback. So what it does is it limits V out. If we didn't have this, what could happen is that we could have huge, uh, well, if we take them out, actually what we get is a square wave out that's peaked to the uh, power supply rails. So this is plus or minus 12. We'll get like a plus or minus 12 output that's a square wave. When we put this in, it limits the voltage across here to 0.7 volts. So what we're doing is we're limiting the output. Uh, that completes the section on oscillators. Um, so you guys can start working on the worksheets.